Hey guys, it's Amy. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a walkthrough of my trip in London. I thought I would just do it in segments and by city. So if you guys haven't checked out my London vlog yet, I will put a link up here as well as down below so you guys can check it out. Uh, but I thought I would walk you through uh, some of the things that I noticed that might be helpful. I was glad that we were able to book a lot of things online in advance because it really is helpful in terms of avoiding queues or at least having shorter queues. Uh, and also, while you book things online, I'm talking about attractions, train tickets, make sure that you also check out the currencies that are available for when you buy the tickets. A lot of times when you shop in their local currency, so for example, um, either in euro or in pounds depending i guess depending on where you go really uh, the exchange rate of with your home currency it might be more beneficial for you to buy in their local currency even though you get charged a 2.5 percent on the credit card or whatnot uh, it ends up being a lot cheaper sometimes so definitely take a note of that we flew WestJet to Gatwick Airport. That's what uh, WestJet flies to. I know that Air Canada flies to Heathrow. But once we arrived in London, uh, we took the Gatwick Express train to get to Victoria. We booked it at off-peak hours, so definitely check the pricing at different hours. It might make a big difference, but I guess it also depends when you arrive. Uh, and we were able to save a significant amount with the group save, which is for four people. So definitely check it out online in advance because you might be able to save a lot. I know that for the four of us, we paid 40, about 47 pounds for four train tickets, which would have cost us a lot more if we hadn't booked it online and if we hadn't uh, seen that it was a lot cheaper for us to book four tickets at the same time versus one each. Oyster card, I do suggest that you purchase at the airport that you're at uh, prior to getting into the city because I think with the visitor's Oyster card, you get a small discount on the card itself and also you get some discount at certain stores if you show that you're a visitor. With the Oyster card, at the end of your trip, you can also get a reimbursement for what is remaining on it. However, we weren't able to do that because apparently you're not, uh, we can't really get a refund at Gatwick, which is... I guess too unfortunate, but we can always keep it for a future for the future when we travel back to London again. Even if you weren't able to get a refund while you were in London, you can still mail it back as well. So there's always that option in case you still have a lot left in your card. We decided to only do carry on for this particular trip because our main purpose is really to sightsee. We only have maybe two or three days in each city, uh, plus the cruise of course, so we didn't want to lug around big luggages. Thankfully it was the summer so it was relatively easier to pack. I mean if there's anything that you need uh, that you can't pack, you can always buy. In terms of clothing, uh, we were able to do laundry at our cruise so it was very limiting but when you think about it, a lot of times when I pack for other trips, I end up bringing more than I need and some of the stuff I never even wear. The girls, we were able to just bring dresses and that was pretty easy because that's like the whole outfit already. And in terms of the jacket and the pants, those were just what we were wearing when we got there. Uh, of course, with London, there's always a chance of rain and we took that into account. So we made sure to layer and the top layer that I had was semi-waterproof. We chose to stay at the St. George Hotel, which is pretty much in downtown. On the first day, it was our travel day. We did arrive at 10.50 a.m. Uh, in London. However, if you think about it, uh, it would have been 2.50 a.m. in Vancouver. So it was a long, long day. Plus it was raining, so we just decided that, you know what, we'll just stay indoors. So we went to Harrods. Uh, we took the metro there, which is very convenient. Transportation wise, between busing and uh, taking the metro, I prefer busing for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is you actually get to sightsee a little. The second reason is I think it's easier on people with disability. Now you might think that I'm exaggerating, but I actually uh, was not feeling very well while I uh, 
arrived in London, which is kind of sad because I had a lot of uh, issues with my ankles and with my hip joint and uh, walking was a very very challenging for me. For the metro system or the underground subway system, uh, there was a lot of stairs involved and a lot of tunnels underground involved to walk through and uh, it's not the easiest for someone who has issues with walking or has issues with going up and down stairs. It's a lot older and I feel like uh, they don't have the escalator systems or the lift system so it's a little bit less ac accessible for uh, people with certain disabilities for sure. Another thing that I highly recommend you guys either have a really good data plan uh, that you can uh, bring to Europe to Rome but uh, even better if you can somehow find a SIM card to buy in Europe. We were lucky that my sister-in-law already had a SIM card uh, that she was able to use in Europe so uh, it helped tremendously in terms of like finding the live route from one place to another. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with Google Maps, but if you're not, I mean, Google Maps is amazing. It tells you how to get from what A to B walking-wise or transit-wise or driving-wise. And so the walking and the transit ones are the ones that we use the most because uh, we relied on public transit while we were there. So it was very, very helpful. It, it tells you down to like which bus number, which bus stop to go to and how many stops to get to your destination and such. So it was very, very helpful to have a SIM card with data. We were traveling the four of us, but we sometimes did separate. I was using her SIM card at the beginning of the trip and then eventually we got our own SIM card when we arrived in Spain. Uh, it was very affordable in Spain for some reason. It was only, I think it was only like 14 euros or or is it nine euros? I, I really don't remember, but it was very, very cheap for a four gigabyte SIM card. So I don't know if it's uh, the same in London, but like I said, it's just really helpful. To on day two, we decided to do afternoon tea. So there's this, I think it's a chain, Hortnum and Mason. It was definitely a great place to visit if you're you want to get the experience of afternoon tea. I do think that it is pricey. If you're going with a group of people or you, even if you're just the two of you, I try to order two separate or two different types of menus because you can get to try each other's. And don't worry about not having enough because you can always refill as much as you want which is something that I never experienced elsewhere. So that was really nice. But to be honest, it's quite easy to fill up on little sandwiches and pastries. From the tea place to where Big Ben is, uh, you will have to walk through a park called St. James Park. So that was kind of nice. It didn't seem like we did a lot in the span of the first two days. But if you take into account jet lag and also how tired you may be, planning ahead where you want to go for sure is good. But make sure you have a priority list because you may not, you may or may not be able to do all those things while you're there if you have very limited time. So as long as you do whatever is on your top of your list, then at least you won't feel as bad. So so on our third day, we decided that uh, we wanted to see the Buckingham Palace as well as the changing of the guard ceremony. However, as you'll notice in my vlog, not the day before, not the day after, on that particular day, they decided to not perform the ceremonies. So moving on, we thought we would uh, hit up some of the museums. A lot of them are free of charge, which is great. The British Museum was one of the best ones. It was pretty big and there was a lot to see. It was probably impossible to do it all in one day, but you just basically pick and choose the ones that you really, the exhibitions that you really want to see. So if you decide to grab a bite at the restaurant in the museum, the great court that is in the upper floor, expect to wait quite a long time because we waited, I don't know, I think we waited closer to 30 minutes or 20 to 30 minutes before we even got seated and another 10 maybe before we even got water and um, after ordering, we waited another like 10 minutes to get our appetizers and then an extra hour for our entree. So we spent a lot of time at the museum, but most of it was actually spent at the restaurant. So just a word of caution, I mean, there are some restaurants right outside the, rest uh, the museum as well. So while the others hit up more museums, they went to the Imperial War Museum afterwards. I decided to just go to Selfridges. 
partly because I do want to see Selfridges and I didn't know if we would have time if all of us went to the museum and then to Selfridges right after that. I wanted to spend some time to look around because I always wanted to see how it looked like uh, and plus I was not as interested in the next museum that they chose to go and yeah I, I was really glad that I was able to hit up uh, the major department stores that everyone talks about uh, Harrods, Selfridges, Liberty. We, I even had the chance to look up uh, to go to Liberty which was pretty amazing because I, I wasn't planning to but it just happened to be there uh, when we went for dinner that night in that little street area called Carnaby Street. We just yelped it and saw what was around that had good reviews. Uh, there is one place I do want to recommend or that you would probably end up going anyway is uh, Prêt à Manger. It's a chain and they have daily fresh sandwiches, salads, coffees, pastries and I thought it was a really good place to grab a nice snack or a nice breakfast that is very quick and easy. Um, I, just, I just thought it was this, the perfect place and plus it was quite tasty. We decided to take the train from L London to Paris and it was with Eurostar for this one um, and the train departed from uh, St. Pancras right across from the King's Cross station which is where the Harry Potter nine and a three quarter platform was so we were able to take a look over there as well make sure that you arrive uh, a little bit earlier because we did get uh, held up at the security for a little bit. Uh, first of all, they were not very fast and second of all, um, they somehow scanned and there was something in my husband's backpack that they didn't like so um, they we were you know set aside, waited for the previous person to finish examining Every single bag that they had, I, I have no idea what they were trying to look in uh, that person's bag but poor them, they went through every single garment inside their pre-packed luggage which you know they had to repack everything and of course they were taking their time, being very thorough, um, you know they were very nice but it just took a while, They I think they spent a good amount of time just with that person's uh, several luggages so luckily with us it was uh, only my husband's backpack and they were just um, wondering what the tripod was because the tripod had like a pointy part love seeing the architecture that I'm not used to seeing here. I did really enjoy my coffees, my macchiatos there. Uh, because of my trip in Europe, actually because of our trip in Europe, all of us came back uh, lusting and longing for the espresso. As a person who loves luxury items, uh, it was just wonderful to be able to um, you know go to Harrods and Selfridges and Liberty. I mean Liberty was more just for I think for the history and for like seeing the old building and all that. Uh, I think in terms of actual shopping experience it would probably have been um, you know, really amazing at Harrods and at Selfridges. Of course, I didn't buy anything there, but I could only imagine living there. Or even if you just like normal shopping, it's it's a great place to look for other gifts too. They, it's so big. They have almost everything. So those are the tips that I can offer. I mean, it was a really, really short time that we had there in London. Plus, we were super jet lagged on the first day, so we couldn't really do that much on the first day anyway. So we really had two days to be honest. Uh, we would have liked to do the London Eye as well the, as the Stonehenge. Those were the two things that we were considering doing uh, but with Stonehenge you needed probably like a good probably the whole day I would say. Next time we'll definitely try to book a little bit more time and spend a little bit more time at that city but at least we got a taste of you know how it is to be in London and how it is to be in Europe in general and even within Europe London is so different from Paris and it's so different from Spain and so it's different from Italy and Monaco. Looking forward to telling you guys all about Paris next. If there's anything that I didn't cover, uh, let me know down below and if I know the answer, I will let you know. But if not, um, hopefully someone else can reply to you, maybe a local. And uh, yeah, we can just go from there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye!